Creating a monthly immunization report at the health facility level takes time, but it is worth the effort. Let us consider an example. Imagine you're a district manager looking at data for two health facilities. The first health facility has a 3% dropout rate. Its refrigerator is permanently functioning at the right temperature, there are no stockouts of any vaccines, and it's completed four out of its four planned outreach immunization sessions. The second facility has a 15% dropout rate, and its vaccine refrigerator has had six alarms this month. If you had to choose only one of these health facilities to prioritize for supervision, which would it be? You would probably choose the one on the right, but if you did not have data, it would be impossible to tell which specific health facility, district, or region needed more focus. That is why the data in a monthly immunization report is so important. In this video, we are going to take a look at each section of a monthly report and practice filling it out together. Write down the name of your health facility and district, the month and the year. Then, write down the number of each target population group for the year. For example, here you would write down the number of infants under the age of 12 months and the number of pregnant women. For any diseases that are under surveillance, report the number of cases of disease and number of deaths this month. Also, write down how many of these have been reported to the district, since some diseases should be immediately reported to the district level. Finally, record the cumulative number of cases investigated and confirmed, and cases of deaths since the beginning of the year. Next, report your vaccine coverage. This section requires doing some calculations. Your monthly target population can be found by dividing your annual target population by 12. For example, if a health facility has 1,030 infants in its catchment area, the monthly target population is 1,030 divided by 12 or 86 infants. The cumulative target population is the monthly target population for one month multiplied by the number of months up to the current month. So let us say that the health facility in our previous example is creating a report in March, which is the third month of the year. If we take the health facility's monthly target population of infants, 86, and multiply it by three, the total is 258 infants. Now for every dose of a vaccine administered, first write down the number of people immunized this month, as well as the cumulative number of immunized people so far this year. For example, in March, you would write down the number of people immunized in March, then the cumulative number of people immunized in January, plus February, plus March. You can find this information in the immunization register or on the tally sheets. Beside each of these numbers, calculate the coverage rate. To find the monthly coverage rate for any dose of any vaccine, take the number of people immunized this month and divide it by the monthly target population. Multiply the total by 100 and that is your coverage rate. For example, let us say 80 children received the BCG vaccine this month. Divide 80 by 86, then multiply the answer by 100. Your monthly coverage rate for BCG is 93%. The same can be done for pentavalent 1 for infants or TT2 plus for pregnant women. For the cumulative coverage rate of any vaccine dose, take the cumulative number of infants immunized with that vaccine dose and divide it by the cumulative target population. 
Multiply the total by 100 to find the cumulative coverage rate. For example, let us say that 80 children were immunized in March with pentavalent 1, 82 in February, and 78 in January, for a cumulative total of 240 immunized children. Divide 240 by the cumulative target population for March, which is 258. Then, multiply the answer by 100 to find the cumulative pentavalent 1 coverage rate. You should have stock records for each type of vaccine. Looking at stock records for each type of vaccine, you should be able to see the number of doses in stock at the beginning and end of the month, as well as number of doses received. You can find the number of doses used by counting up all the doses recorded on your tally sheets. Try to answer this question, because it really helps to know the reason for discarding unopened vials. Was it because of the expiry date? Or did cold chain equipment malfunction? Knowing the reason why can help everyone in the system solve problems. If there are no adverse events, write down zero. Otherwise, report the details of any serious or non-serious adverse events. Never leave an empty box. Write down the number of fixed immunization sessions you planned for the month and how many you actually completed. Do the same thing for outreach sessions. Report on safe injection supply stock. How many diluents, safety boxes, and syringes of various types did you receive this month? How many do you have in stock as of the end of the month? Report refrigerator temperature data. On the chart you use to record daily refrigerator temperatures, you should be able to see the highest and the lowest temperatures that were recorded in each piece of equipment this month. You should also be able to see how many alarms were triggered for high or low temperatures. Finally, you're ready to submit the monthly report. Keep all the original data monitoring forms and charts in your records. Follow these steps to make sure your summary is complete and timely every month.